Hi, Aquarius. How are you doing? How's that Pluto storm going down? How are you feeling? Are you noticing big changes? Are you having to face things? But ultimately be liberated. Luckily for you, this month is bringing great dollops of happiness and potential. And that's going to really help you over the next year. But before we get to that, let us start at the beginning. Uh, and you're deeply involved. We have on the 1st of May, Venus Square, Pluto, the Lord of Transformation in your sign. So there are going to be loving but revolutionary changes when it comes to your home and family. You should already know what this is. I would reckon it's already been brewing, but you are making powerful shifts around home and family that will ultimately liberate you and you have the strength to do it you have the voice to do it if normally you don't express what you're feeling you are you are very clearly and potentially forcefully speaking your mind on the 3rd of may now let's get stuck into the huge and potentially wonderful things that are happening this month and the energy for you is all about home and family actually big shifts big potential potentially fabulous surprises around those areas and self-nurturing and feeling cozy, safe and secure. This new moon is saying let go of what you need to let go of in terms of home and family. Some surprise will happen, potentially great good fortune around that area, which will help you move on to the next level. You are feeling that you can stretch yourself. You are feeling open. Jupiter is fundamentally bringing great joy because one of the most powerful days of this year is on the 23rd where there is a Venus and Jupiter conjunction. This is full on. It's one of the best, 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 best transits you can ever have. And it is, again, bringing you gifts all of this month around home and family. Now, family doesn't necessarily mean just your blood relatives. It's the people you could, animals, pets, uh, it, it can, it's your friends. It's the people that you designate as your family. And we're very blessed to have that, to be born in a time where we can choose what family means to us. And it's not necessarily in the traditional bloodline way. Although some people have great family relationships. If you're someone that has problematic family, this great transformation could be about your creating a different kind of family or you doing great things with, with the people that you consider family. But either way, and also wherever you're living, there is the potential for very positive shift of energy there, big changes that you are going to celebrate. And again, this is the tune that the cosmos is playing. You have to, you know, if this is something you want and it's something on your mind, you have to take action action is very important but you're being given this massive helping hand from jupiter so that new moon really contemplate what you need to let go of to find what you need in those areas mercury is also going 100 retrograde and moving into taurus on the 15th and you're able to discuss your needs and be much closer to people around that time you might have had a load of crap around either your home or family during that eclipse season, but now you're moving through it. Uh, the Sun and Jupiter are also conjunct on the 18th. You're confident, you're shiny, you're persuasive, you're radical, you're revolutionary and all the things that you naturally are. You're finding your voice. Now, things get really interesting on the 5th and we're leading up to something fantastic for you. But from the, the 20th, rather, it's about the 50th, from the 20th, <laughs> Um, energy starts to head towards your fifth house of pleasure, creativity and joy. And you're tweaking under the hood of your life engine to really boost your happiness and your joy and your creativity. And great things are coming your way. The big energy, as I said, for this month is on the 23rd. We have a full moon in Sagittarius, which is bringing a great, either a great idea for you online or a great idea for you where you're collaborating or mixing with people and potentially something that you wanted to manifest in the past happens around that day and you're making big shifts and it's gonna even though it could be a small thing you change it creates a massive change in who you relate to and how you relate online what you're putting out there and other people are really receptive to your message and your voice with venus and jupiter conjunct and venus sextile neptune and Jupiter sextile Neptune, 
You're going to feel much more secure in yourself. The potential is there anyway. There could be some abundance or shift around your home environment or your family environment. And you're like, yes, actually, I'm now on a strong footing to move forward. Now, on the 23rd, also Venus moves into Gemini. And on the 25th, Jupiter moves into Gemini. Oh, you have got, a, I think it's around a year. I haven't looked at, you know, Jupiter's normally around a year. But you are you are having an experience of absolute pleasure and joy. Now, of course, because Pluto is in your sign, no doubt you're going to have to make changes to really draw that to you. But you could have the most creative idea you've ever had. You, one of your creative ideas could take off and become a success. I mean, the potential is off the scale. Make sure you do something to encourage it. Make sure that you allow yourself to really plunge in to love and creativity because there are great and rich rewards for you. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. So here is the deck. I love the box. It's got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flipped up. How fabulous is that? I love that. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. Here they are. Notice the gold. The fool. The magician. The high priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original Rider Waite. And I have three lovers cards. The Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, various heroes here. This is Anime Wong. So I've got this leaflet that comes with a pack. It gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it. But this is the book. And I'm so pleased with it because what I aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability, but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card. Let's take a look inside. In it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you, most importantly, about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly, because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talked to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card, see what we've got. Well, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. This book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot. And I've tried to put everything I know and and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. You can get them from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul, and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it, because I wanted to have an inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration. <laughs>